I've made the decision to gift the luxury car you purchased to my parents. What are you saying? Mom and Dad are genuinely thrilled. Wait just a moment. Did you buy with the intention of giving it to your mom and dad? Yes, that's right. No matter what you say, it's already bought. If you disobey me, I'll divorce you. What? Divorce? At that moment, something inside me that had been holding me back collapsed. If you disobey, divorce. Who is saying that? Fine. I'm happy to do it. My name is Rose. I'm a 37-year-old office worker. I live with my husband, Jack, and our daughter, Lily, who just turned seven. Jack and I both work, so we don't have any trouble making a living. My daughter is growing up well. I'm happy in my own way, but it's not that I don't have complaints to Jack. Jack is the type of person who cares more about his parents than his own family. Of course, it's good that he cares about his family, but there were many times when he would prioritize his own parents and his own daughter. That's not a pleasant thing for me. Even when my daughter was being born, I called Jack at work and told him I was having labor pains. I asked him to come to the hospital because I was about to give birth. I'm sorry. I just got a call that my mom burned her finger, so I'm going to my parents' house, he said. I thought, how could he possibly be more worried about his mother's burn than his wife's delivery? And my mother-in-law's parents were caused by touching a pen that was on fire with their bare hands. She just got a small burn, and when she cooled it down under running water, it was fine. I couldn't believe my mother-in-law for calling her son for such a thing. And I also couldn't believe Jack rushed to her place in a panic for such a thing. Jack is hardworking and basically kind to me, but how he is to his parents really bothers me. Also, something like this happened on the day of my daughter's first birthday, coincident with my in-law's trip. The in-laws had asked him to drive the car, so Jack's first priority was to drive them. And he didn't even celebrate our daughter's birthday together coming back home. But he stayed at the hotel with his parents because they could get an extra room. Adding, it was unbelievable that he would prioritize a trip with his parents over his own daughter's first birthday. I felt distrust towards Jack after that. This kind of thing happened often, but I couldn't easily divorce him. I still loved Jack, and I didn't think it was right to deprive my daughter of her father so easily. And it's not that he doesn't care about his daughter, he was not indifferent to his daughter. So, I had faith that he would eventually prioritize our daughter. But from the time she was born until this year, he has never celebrated our daughter's birthday with me. She is now seven years old. He seems to think that her birthday should be celebrated with just the two of us. I tried not to make her feel lonely. I thought about inviting my in-laws to celebrate her birthday with me once, but my in-laws refused, saying it would be too much of a hassle to come over. It's true that it takes about two hours by car to come to our place from my parents' in-laws' house, but Jack always goes to see his parents without thinking of the distance as a hassle. But to say that it's a hassle to come here, I think it's too selfish. And my mother-in-law is so selfish that... He says he wanted me to have a boy in the first place, and she doesn't love our daughter alone. I told you that I want a boy, so why did you disobey me? I couldn't believe my ears when she said these words. I don't think you can choose the sex of your child, and I don't think it's that important to have a boy in the first place. It's not that Jack's family is a famous family, it's just that my mother-in-law is old-fashioned and insists on having a boy. The only reason Jack doesn't celebrate our daughter's birthday with us is partly because he's trying to please his mother. Jack is more concerned about his parents than anything else. He can't seem to disobey anything his mother says. When Jack took me to her New Year's family gathering at my parents-in-law's house, she said a lot of things to me. My mother-in-law seems to enjoy bullying me, not only about not having a boy, but she also picks on me about other things. Rose, why can't you do things more quickly? Look, there's someone with an empty cup. Why don't you pour a drink? 
My mother-in-law used me like I was working in a brothel. She made fun of me in front of the relatives. My son is really great, but his wife is a disaster. Her job is just a simple office job, entering data. I wonder how she can keep doing that and not get tired of it. I've told her many times that my job is not data entry but engineering, but my mother-in-law doesn't understand me at all. Besides, data entry is a great job too. I don't understand why she denies it. I'm sure she can see our daughter, but she ignores her. She gives New Year's gifts to other relatives' children but not to our daughter. And I'm angry at Jack who doesn't stop her at all. His daughter has been mistreated, and his wife is being mistreated like a fool. I don't know why he's laughing at what his mother says. He even says, my wife is not good without me. He's trying to act cool in front of the relatives. I didn't want to deprive our daughter of her father, so I tried to be patient. But I gradually lost my love for Jack. Then one day, Jack asked me for a favor. Actually, there's something I want to buy. What is it? A car. What, a car? I was surprised. Jack was never interested in cars or anything like that. Why all of a sudden? I just thought I could get a new one for a change, you know. I drive to my parents' house all the time, so I thought I'd like to freshen it up. We live close to a supermarket. I don't drive that much. I'm not interested in cars, so I thought I'd leave it to Jack. Well, it's up to you. You're the main user of the car. Jack looked happy and then continued with a slightly apologetic look on his face. Oh, you know, here's the thing, I'll choose the car, and I allow you to pay for it. Jack wants a car for himself, but he can't afford to buy one himself. He wants me to pay for it. In fact, my salary supports the family's finances, and I don't expect Jack's salary to do so. When I was on maternity leave, Jack did not contribute his salary to the household, so I immediately resumed work right after giving birth. But I'm an engineer, so I talked to the company about allowing me to work remotely from home. I work while raising our daughter. When she was little, I thought it was selfish of Jack, who spent his salary remaining on himself, to make me pay for a new car. But when he is in a good mood, he often takes care of our daughter, so I decided to allow him to do so. Okay. Are you sure? Thank you. Jack was so happy that he started looking at catalogs and researching on the internet. I'm the one who pays for it, so I warmed to him though. Since there will only be three of us, it doesn't have to be a big car. Yeah, I know. Jack was just mumbling along my words. I didn't know if he was listening or not, and he went to the car store every now and then talk to the dealer. About two weeks later, Jack said he was going to buy the car. He took me to the store. Jack was so excited. I sat down and waited for him to tell me what to do, and here comes the other. Here's his car and a contract. I was surprised to see the car that the dealer had prepared for us. It was a large luxury minivan. Oh my god, are we buying this? Oh yeah, it's nice. I'm really excited. Wait a minute. I don't think we need it at all. I mean, for the future, it's better to have something as sleek as this, you know. Maybe if we have another baby. Jack insists it is a good choice, but I was surprised to see that it's not what I imagined the car to be at all. Even if we do have another child, this car is too big for a family of four. Are we really going to buy this car? I said again and again, and he looked frustrated. Why do you keep saying the same thing over and over? You're making the dealer feel uncomfortable. You're the one who said leave it to me. I did, but that was the problem. It's settled. Jack signed a contract. Then the dealer explained the price. I was surprised to hear the price. I can't pay this in one lump sum. You have to get a loan or something. What the heck? 
Fine, I guess I don't have a choice. Jack insisted on signing the contract in his own name, so we took out a loan. From now on, I would put the money into Jack's account and make the payments on the car loan. We bought the car in this way. Later, the car arrived at our house. Whoa, whoa, it's so cool. Jack was so excited when he saw the car. I thought, well, if he's happy with it, why not? Then, something unexpected happened. It was on a weekend. Jack had the car keys, so I asked him if he was going somewhere. Oh, where are we going? To my mom and dad's. All right. He's leaving our daughter behind to visit his parents again. You're going in that car, aren't you? And then, Jack happily says something I didn't expect. Yes, that's right. I've decided to give the luxury car you bought to my parents as a present. What are you talking about? Mom and Dad are really happy with it. Of course, I'm going to drive you into every time we go out. Wait a minute, you bought it as a gift for your mom and dad at the first place? Yes, I did. You are kidding, right? You said you wanted it, so I agreed to buy it. That's why. If I knew from the start that I was buying it for my parents, you'd never allowed it. Of course not. It's crazy that you would put your own parents first to that extent. No matter what you say, I already bought it. It's in my name, and I get to do what I want. If you disobey me, I'll divorce you. Divorce. At that moment, something inside me that had been holding me back collapsed. I had my complaints about Jack, but my rational mind was telling me not to get a divorce because of our daughter. Even though Jack puts his own parents first, I thought he also cared about his own family, me and our daughter. But he could easily cut us out of his life for his parents. How is that possible? Divorce if I disobey. Who the hell does he think he is? Fine, let's have the divorce. What? I don't want you around anymore. Go back to your mother and father, mama's boy. I tried to provoke him. And just as I had planned, Jack's face turned red, and he became angry. What, you're making fun of me, aren't you? Fine then, let's get a divorce right now. I'll go get the divorce papers. Jack sneered and went to the city office. While he was there, I started packing my stuff. I called my parents, explained the situation, and asked them to pick me up. I told my daughter to pack her things too. Meanwhile, Jack came back. I've got it signed quickly. Jack had filled out the forms at the city office, and it was signed in very dark handwriting that looked like it was written out of anger. I've signed my part without hesitation. Well, I'll file it, so why don't you just go? I'm going even if you don't tell me to. You are really such a terrible wife, you know that. Jack led with his footsteps, making loud noises. Why did I stay married to such a person for so long? If I had to do this, I should have left him sooner, but it's no use regretting today. I'm grateful that I was able to leave him, and from now on, I will do my best as a single mother. A few minutes after Jack left, my parents arrived. We cooperated and finished packing our belongings. We loaded them into my parents' car and went home. In the meantime, I filed the divorce papers, and my divorce from Jack was finalized. It was just a piece of paper, but when I filed the papers and realized that we were no longer officially married, I suddenly felt much lighter. Then I decided to look for a place for our daughter and me to live together. About a week after Jack and I divorced, I was at my parents' house when I saw the luxury car that Jack had purchased. I walked into my parents' house with our daughter. I saw my ex-husband and my ex-in-laws in the living room. My mother noticed me and took our daughter to the other room. I went to the living room. Jack was talking to me in a panic. Oh, Rose, what's the insurance on that car? Jack started asking me very agitatedly. What's the matter with you? 
Why are you barging into our house like this? I said coldly. And my ex parents raised their voices. We don't want to come here either. We came here because of circumstances beyond our control, didn't we? Why should I be yelled at? My father was quietly angry at my vaccine laws for raising their voices. If that's the case, could you please leave? You're strangers to us now. We can call the police and have them kick you out. Then my ex-parents-in-law were frightened and became silent. Hey, Rose, tell me, what's going on with the insurance payments? I couldn't help but sigh. Did you forget what you said when you signed the contract? You insisted that the papers be in your name. So you bought the car in your name and took out the loan in your name. You have to pay for the insurance yourself. My words made my ex-parents-in-law pale. Jack had made a choice to take a loss for the sake of his own pride. Well, I didn't want that car in the first place, so it's normal that he buys it in his own name. It's his fault that it turned out to be he to do the payments. Oh no, apparently, Jack and then his parents were so excited about their luxury car that they drove the car too fast, and they drove it into a car trail, and the front part of the car was broken. Come to think of it. When I came home, it was parked so that I couldn't see the front side of the car. I didn't look at it properly, so they came to me, who was in charge of the payments, to ask about insurance. The car is owned by the loan company, so it would have to be fixed in, and since they don't have insurance, they are responsible for the entire cost, and they would have to pay for the guardrail too. I wonder how much it would cost to repair a luxury car. I'm sure it's going to be expensive. In the end, the ex-husband and his parents returned the car and were charged a large amount of money for the repairs. After that, I received a lot of emails from Jack asking me to get back together with him. One of the messages said that they couldn't afford to pay their rent and utility bills. He moved back to his parents because of that. However, it seems that Jack's parents were really hard on my ex, who was driving the car. Now he doesn't want to stay at home because of their attitude, but he can't live alone because he has a lot of debt. Jack is still insisting that he wants to see our daughter after all this time. I think that's too selfish, and I'm not going to allow it. I keep ignoring his emails. Of course, I didn't tell him about the new house that I and our daughter are living in. The only thing I was worried about was whether our daughter would miss him. However, to my surprise, she doesn't seem to mind at all and seems to be enjoying her life. I will continue to work hard to protect our daughter's life. I don't think you should put your own parents before your own daughter, and while having your wife pay and giving the car as a gift to your parents, that's quite impossible. Well, he destroyed himself, so he really deserved it. I hope Rose and her daughter have a happy life together.